The Hertzsprung Russell diagram is an important diagram that you need to know for your astrophysics A level. The Hertzsprung Russell diagram helps us compare the temperature or spectral class of stars with their magnitude or luminosity. And in an exam, you may be expected to either draw a diagram from scratch or interpret one that's been provided to you. And then once you've drawn it, you may be expected then to mark on different stars, such as the Sun, or stars which you may be expected to compare to the Sun. In an exam, typically, you'll be given a empty set of axes, which will either be marked with temperature, as they are in this example, or maybe marked with spectral class. So when you are marking up your exam, or sorry, marking up your graph, the first thing to remember that it's not a graph in the truest sense of the word, so you're not going to start with zero and make your way up to a larger number over here. It's more of a diagram that represents different types of stars. If we're marking up with temperature, as we will be on this axis, um, we need to remember that the hottest stars, the uh, O-class stars, over on the left-hand side of the diagram, will have a temperature of around about 50,000 Kelvin. So we mark up 50,000 over here on the left-hand side. And the coolest stars over here on the right-hand side, the, um, the M-class stars, will have a temperature of around 2,500 Kelvin. So we don't need to put any um, subdivisions down here on this axis. This would be absolutely fine. You may want to write down the spectral classes as well. And that might help you uh, organize your diagram. So I'm just going to write these down on here as well. So we have O-class. B, A, F, G, K, and M. And that might just help you organise your diagram. And remember, 2,500 Kelvin would be part of the M, M class. We need to now make sure we put absolute magnitude up on this axis. We would put the uh, dimmest magnitudes here at the bottom, so we'd be expected of the magnitude of around about 15 at the bottom, and the brightest magnitudes would go at the top, so the magnitude of minus 10. Uh, magnitude of 0 would be around about here and then we can see we split it up to the subdivisions again 5 and 10. So now we need to draw on the main bit of the Hertzsprung russell diagram, the HR diagram. So it can be quite difficult to think about where all the different parts of it go. There are going to be three main sections that you need to draw on. The sequence of main sequence stars, which goes down the middle, the giant stars, which are up in the top right-hand corner, and the white dwarf stars, which go down here. But we need to make sure that our band of main sequence stars is in the right place. A good way to do that is to remember some of the properties of our Sun, uh, which is a G-class star, so it'll be somewhere up here. It also has an absolute magnitude of around about 5. So I'm going to put a small dot here where our Sun would go, and then we can put everything else in it. So the main sequence will have stars uh, all of the spectral classes, M all the way through to hot O and B-class stars over here. And it has a very distinctive swoosh down the middle. Now we mustn't just draw a line. However, a line might help us just understand whereabouts our main sequence will go. So it's roughly sort of in that sort of shape, although maybe our main sequence wouldn't quite have stars as bright as minus 10. But we must draw it as a band. So once I've drawn my basic shape, I can just flesh it out so a little bit. And then on the other side. Like that. And that's my band of... Uh, main sequence stars and I can rub out that section down the middle. The giant stars will be up here and we need to make sure that they are cool so they'll be over G, K and M class but they also have very bright magnitudes. They'll be very very powerful luminous stars. So they will not be dimmer than a magnitude of zero but they'll be somewhere up here between zero and five. Maybe even, even as high as minus ten. So I'm just going to draw a cloud of giants over here and I'm going to label those giants. And this is my main sequence stars. I need to make sure that my cloud of giants doesn't touch my uh, my cloud of main sequence stars. And then down here we have some very dim but hot white dwarfs. So those are my white dwarf stars. And that's the basic structure of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Once you've drawn your HR diagram, you may be expected to mark on a few different objects. So we've already marked the sun, 
which is there. It's a G-class star, magnitude of, uh, it's got a magnitude of about 4.8, so that's in the round about the right place. But you also may be expected to put on other stars which you can compare to the sun. So, for example, we might want to put a star which has got the same brightness as the sun, but might have a much higher temperature. Now, brightness is the absolute magnitude. So a star with the same brightness will have the same absolute magnitude, but a much higher temperature would be over here. So we draw a horizontal line across, and then we can mark it on the edge of the cloud. That would be an A-class star there. You may even, if you've drawn your main sequence is slightly flatter over here, may even get it into the B-class. So that would be hotter, but the same magnitude. You might be expected to draw a star which has a similar spectrum, but it's much larger. So the spectrum would be determined by the temperature or the class of the star. So if the sun is a class G, then everything up on this line will have the same spectrum as the sun, i.e. the same temperature, but if it's up in this cloud of stars up here, it's obviously going to be significantly larger, and therefore significantly brighter as well. So this is a large giant star, same spectral class, or the same temperature, but much brighter. We can also draw stars which are significantly larger, and you might be expected to um, draw a star based on a description of the lines that it is uh, creating in its spectrum. So, for example, if we wanted to represent a star which had molecular absorption lines in its spectrum, that would tell us if it's got molecular absorption lines, that it's a cooler star, so over here in the M class. But if it's also significantly larger, then it must be in the giant class, uh, the giant cloud up here. So that dot there is a star which is larger, but shows molecular absorption lines. And so we can then look at different stars. We can think about a star which is um, the same size as the sun, but significantly cooler. So that would be look, any star over here in this main sequence. Cooler stars in the K and M class. So this one here might be the same size. But cooler. So by understanding how this, this Hertzsprung-Russell diagram works, and by learning the shapes of these different parts of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, we can uh, draw it confidently and also use it confidently to help us compare the properties of different stars just based on small amounts of information such as their size or the spectral class on it. And it's a very, very useful tool to allow us to make direct comparisons of two different stars. So practice drawing it and good luck in your exams.